is so good to be back in person and be able to see all of you all live in the flesh and exchange ideas and build relationships face to face. I can tell you it is sometimes easy to feel alone in this movement, like you're the only one who thinks the way that you do, or that you're the only one that senses that something is dramatically and systemically wrong with healthcare, much like Neo did in The Matrix. You know, universally, people on the street will agree that healthcare costs too much, but most will think that that's a result of the insurance companies. And they would be, for the most part, right. However, much like in the matrix, most Americans are not quite ready to grasp how truly large the problem is or how far down the rabbit hole it goes. As a whole, the United States has not been forced to dig deeper to understand the reality of our healthcare system that the expense, complexity, and dysfunction that we experience is intentional and by design. Instead, the narrative containing catchy headlines, the three bullet summary, and the 30 second video snippets still rule in the false attempt to explain healthcare and the associated problems. Really, what most Americans think they know or believe they know about healthcare and the business of healthcare is simply not true. Over time, this false narrative has been constructed to exert power and control over patients and employers while making the biggest and strongest players even bigger and stronger. Very few in the healthcare power structure really want the cost of care to come down or for healthcare to become simpler. They simply cannot contemplate or withstand a future in which patients and employers are empowered with facts to be able to make their own choices regarding price, quality, and where they choose to get their care. We hear many experts advocate for this or that law, this or that regulatory solution, or some kind of reform that will fix this broken system. While this is not an outright lie, it is certainly misguided to believe that government can affect any sort of positive change. This can be illustrated by the recent passage of the No Surprises Act in Congress. As the owner of a third party administrator, we at the Kempton Group, we're right in the thick of trying to figure out how to comply with these new requirements. I can tell you they will have little to do with actual free market transparency or encouraging open competition in healthcare. Keith and I anticipated this potential future legislated transparency scheme eight years ago with exemptions going to the highest bidder. We said that once transparency was legislated, the rush would be on to redefine transparency into something closely resembling the status quo. But now the cartel would enjoy the newly legislated cover of being transparent. Government needs to stop picking the winners and losers in healthcare and the greater economy. As buyers have been pushed even further away from the decision-making process and being the ultimate arbiters of value, things have just gotten worse. Sellers of healthcare with no need or desire to be responsive to the market are put in the perfect position to continue to inflict pricing abuse. The only viable solution is to put the decision-making power back into the hands of patients, arming them with information and rewarding them when they make smart decisions. However, we also must be willing to let patients feel the sting of high cost and low quality, just as they do in every other area of their lives. This is also a key signal that is required in order for the free market to work its magic. When patients have the knowledge and the tools to be good consumers, it will allow the market to reassert itself. In turn, sellers will be forced to compete with a better product and at a lower net price. Just like every other business, ignoring these realities will bring harm to the seller's bottom line and to their market share. Americans commonly believe that healthcare is just too complex or it's too different. I actually heard that at, uh, last night at dinner. <clears throat> healthcare is too complex, it's too different to work like other businesses. That healthcare is and should be immune to such trivial and unimportant constraints as cost or quality. They believe that we can't shop for healthcare the way we do for a car or a pair of shoes. 
If left to the bureaucrats, I promise that this will continue to be the reality. Another lie that employers and patients believe is that healthcare just costs this much. They believe that their TPA, their consultant, or their insurance carrier is doing everything they can to help, advising the employer honestly and presenting the hard and simple truth about the problems and their solutions. However, many of us in this room know how false that really is. All over the news are examples of how, trans, uh, about how hospitals are starting to comply with these new transparency laws. But having access to the newly mandated pricing information will not result in better consumerism. In fact, most of the information that's been mandated to be shared, like the average PPO allowable or a patient's estimated out-of-pocket costs, is useless to most consumers trying to make a better buying decision and it ignores the real market clearing price for that care. But of course, helping consumers and driving down costs was never really the point, was it? There are many things that we buy here in America that are complex. Houses, iPhones, heavy equipment, office buildings, pickup trucks, Tesla Model S's, MRI scanners, Boeing 777s. All of these items have a price tag and can be bought with cash. And yet, all of these things can and are regularly shopped. How can that be? The answer is, if the sellers of these products desire to sell as many of their products as possible, they are required by their market, potential buyers, to make buying their product as simple as possible and the best it can be and offered at the most competitive price. If they don't achieve these things, their business will suffer and they will eventually go out of business because the buyers will simply choose to buy somewhere else. As an example, Boeing has 57 major subcontractors that are involved in the construction of their model 777. These subcontractors have been heavily negotiated with and vetted and expected to stand behind their price and their product. Why? Because Boeing must be able to come to market with a complete product incorporating all associated components produced by their subcontractors. Boeing will be judged not only by the price of their out the door product, but also its quality. Indirectly, they will be judged on their ability to negotiate with and choose the right subcontractors. None of this is the responsibility of the buyer of their products. Their buyers won't stand for that level of complexity. Making the complex as simple as possible is both the responsibility and in the best interest of Boeing. Why? Because of some government transparency law? Nope, because it, their market demands it. I don't think anyone can argue that the construction of a state-of-the-art jetliner is less complex than a hernia repair. Healthcare is complex on purpose. Confusion and opacity make it easy to dominate, bully, and fleece customers. Whether that customer is a patient, an employer, a health share, or a stop-loss carrier. Healthcare being too complex, too different, unable to be shopped by consumers is a lie. The lie that the country, the government, and the media have either bought into or have willingly facilitated. Or at least for a couple, for at least a couple of generations, the wool has been pulled over the eyes of most Americans. The fact is, sellers can, in folks in this room, do make healthcare easier to purchase, understand, and navigate. But there's just little to no market penalty for maintaining the status quo. I've recently heard from a couple of employers saying that they're concerned about hurting their local employed doctor or hospital by demanding transparency and a better deal, or by incentivizing their employees to go to a different medical provider. So do we apologize to our car salesman or the car dealership if we can't get them to be more in line with, their competitive, with other competitive sellers? And as a result, we choose to buy somewhere else. Of course, we don't apologize for that. With deeper engagement and communication between the physician, patient, and employer, 
we see a brighter future for all parties. Less cost, better quality, more freedom. All achieved with voluntary, mutually beneficial exchanges and by allowing market forces and innovation to flourish. One of the key enablers of this will be the independent primary care physician. The physician developed and led business model of direct primary care can enable many of these reforms to take shape. We will be learning a lot more about that highly effective red pill later in the conference. The FMMA was formed with a simple mission of providing a forum and a framework for like-minded stakeholders to exchange ideas and best practices concerning the DIY reform of healthcare. The stakeholders are placed into one of three general categories, buyers, patients, employers, et cetera, sellers, physicians, facilities, pharma, and thirdly, value-adding facilitators. The role of the facilitator, which happens to be the best way to describe my company, is to reduce the transactional friction between the buyers and sellers that are operating in their own self-interest. We also provided a set of free market friendly pillars that are shared with and upheld by all FMMA members and applicants. These pillars are listed on the FMMA website. And with these principles, we hoped that the FMMA membership would stand as sort of a good housekeeping seal of approval for the good guys and gals in healthcare. The only reason this association exists is to further expand and foster the application of free market principles in arguably the most important industry in America. So in the next couple of days, you won't just learn about the lies inside the matrix of healthcare, but you also learn how we are winning the battle for the truth here in the real world. I'm very excited about the speakers and the topics that we have this year, and we're all going to learn a lot. If you have questions, Please find a member of the FMMA staff or assistants. Of course, they're the ones dressed in the black trench coats. Make sure to visit all the conference's uh, sponsor booths and introduce yourself. Without our sponsors, this event would not happen. Also, you know, I hear that all the, every conference I go to, visit your sponsors because the event wouldn't happen. But you know, I've, being so close to this convention, you know, it costs us, it costs the FMMA 750 to 800 bucks for every single one of you in these seats. Of course, that's not what you had to pay for. That's what, not the price that you had to pay to be here. The difference was made up by the sponsors. So really go by and say thank you and learn what they have and how they may be able to help you. Also visit the FMMA booth to check out all the great swag that's available over there. And most of all, please introduce yourself to all the other attendees. Build new relationships. And most of all, let's have fun. Thanks.